What's going on guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to process XML files in Python. So let us get right into it. Now I do already have a tutorial on XML processing on this channel. However, it's kind of old and low quality, but still people are watching it, people are searching for it. And since the demand is so high, it has so many views, I thought, why not make a new modern version with a higher quality where I explain to you how to process XML files in Python. And this is what we're going to do today. For those of you who don't know what XML files are, XML files look like this. We have uh, a bunch of tags, opening tags, closing tags, quite similar to HTML. We have, for example, here the group, and here we close the group. Inside of the group, we have persons or people, uh, person one, person two. We have the ID attribute here. We have inside of the person, we have uh, other tags like name, age, weight, height. There we have some values inside of these tags. Uh, so we're basically just structuring data inside of files. And it's more powerful than JSON, whole UIs and websites are based on XML or XML similar uh, file formats. So you definitely want to know how to work with XML files. And in Python, you have two different modules that allow you to work with XML files. The first one is called XML.sax, which, which I'm going to refer to as SAX, because I don't want to unnecessarily trigger the YouTube algorithm for stupid reasons. Uh, this stands for simple API for XML. And then we also have XML DOM, which stands for document object model. Now the difference between those two is that in SAX, we never load the full XML file into the RAM. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, we never load the full XML file into the RAM, we only load pieces that we need at the moment into the RAM. We read from them, we process them, but we cannot change the content of the XML file by using SAX. However, we can do that with a document object model with DOM, uh, because then we load the full XML file into the RAM, we create a hierarchical structure, and then we can change and uh, read values, and we can write values, we can add values, and so on. So there's no reason to use SAX unless you have limited resources. If your RAM is not big enough or if the file is too big for the RAM, you might want to use uh, SAX because then you have to read pieces only and not the full file because it's too large. Otherwise, you should always go with DOM. However, we're going to look at both of them. We're going to start with SAX. And for this, we're going to import XML.SAX. And uh, what we usually do is we create a handler and we have a parser, then we add to the parser, the handler, and then we can parse the XML file. So what we usually do is we say xml.sax.content handler, like that. And then we say, uh, what was it parser equals xml.sax.make parser like that, then parser.set content handler, and we set the handler. And then what we do is we say parser.parse and we parse the people.xml file. This is how you do it usually, but we're going to create our own class. <clears throat> it's not gonna be content handler, it's gonna be people handler. So we're going to remove all that. We're going to start all over again by saying class people handler is xml.sax. or extends from xml.sax.content handler. And then we say def start element. Um, we're going to have three functions. We're going to have start element, we're going to have characters, and we're going to have end element. Start element triggers when we read a certain, when we start reading a certain tag, end element when we're done, and characters in between. So what we're going to do is we're going to say start element has self, name, and attributes here as keywords. And all we want to do when we start reading a tag, we want to say, okay, self.current, which means current tag, is going to be the name. And if that current name is person, we're just going to say, if name equals a person, we're going to print that a new person is now printed. So what we want to do here is we just want to read the whole file. That's all we're doing here. Um, so print person, and we're going to print the ID as well, which is attributes ID, like a dictionary. There you go. So we print whenever we read a new person, this headline here, and the rest is done by characters and end elements. So characters has self and content as keywords here. And all we want to do here is basically, if self.current equals 
to name. So if it's not person, if here we set self dot current to name, if that is the case, we're just going to say self dot name is the current content that we're reading at the moment. Elif self dot current equals h. We're going to say self dot h equals the current content. And we're copying that now and we're going to do the same thing for weight and height weight height like that uh, and we don't need the default case so that's what we're doing and in the end we want to do the printing when we're done with the uh, respective elements so def and element not people handler and element self name um, self and name basically just we're going to say, okay, if self dot current equals name again, then print name is self dot name like that. And elif, we can basically copy that and replace this with elif. Then we can copy that a couple more times. There you go. And change name to h name to h and name to h then same thing with weight 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 and last but not least height height and height like that so we start with the element, we set the current attribute or the current variable of our class to the respective name. So person, name, age, whatever. While we're reading, we're setting the local attribute to the content of what we're reading at the moment. And then we're printing it once we're done. Important thing, we always want to reset the current. So self.current is going to be empty in the end again. All right. Um, now what we do is we say handler equals people handler parser equals XML dot SAX dot make parser parser dot set uh, set content handler is going to be handler and then parser dot parse people dot XML. That's it. This is going to trigger that whole functionality here so we can run this. If we didn't make any mistakes, as you can see, we read all the values from the XML file. So this is what you can do with SAX. Now DOM works a little bit differently because you're not having some functions that trigger when you pass an element or when you process it, but you're having this more query like approach where you say get elements by tag name, get their childs and so on. So a little bit more query like, and in order to work with DOM, we import xml.dom.minidom. And then we can start by saying DOM tree is going to be XML DOM mini DOM parse. So we're creating a DOM tree out of an XML file. So people.xml like that. And the group is the top element. So the group is DOM tree, DOM tree dot document element. This is the topmost element that we have. And if we want to get the people, we basically just say people equals group dot get elements by tag name, uh, not people, but person. And this gives us the collection of people that we can iterate through. So again, we create a DOM tree based on an XML file. We get the group, which is a document element. And then we get all the elements that have the tag name person, which are all the people. And now we can iterate through them and process them. So we can say, for example, for person in people, we say print person. And here, let's make this an F string again. We say person dot get attribute ID like that. Um, there you go. And then we just print the values name and so on. So we say name equals person dot get elements by tag name name, we get the first one that we find, 
we get the child nodes of this name, we get the first one that we find of the child nodes. And from that we get the node value a little bit complex to write it, but that's how you get the actual text value from that uh, note, we copy that and we change age and uh, weight and height. And here again, age, weight, height. There you go. And now all we need to do is we need to say print f string name, and then name. And we can do the same thing with h weight height h weight height there you go so if i run this we should see the same result that we saw with sax as you can see this works as well but in a different way here we query by name we don't have a start element function and element function we get at uh, we get elements by name uh, then we get the child nodes and node values and so on. So it's a different approach. It's a more query like approach, as I said. Now with DOM, we can also change stuff in the XML file. So we can manipulate values, we can not only get them and read them, we can also change them. For example, I can get the people collection, get the first guy from there, the first person from there, and say get element by tag name, uh, name, and I can get uh, the first one that I find and I can get to the child node zero and I can get to the node value and then I can manipulate it by saying this is now now at the moment it is uh, Jennifer cold. So now it's going to be Peter warm. There you go. And I can do something like people zero again, set attribute, I can change the uh, ID to 200, for example, and I can add a new attribute as well. So I can say people zero set attribute new attribute is going to be I don't know. Hello. By the way, we need to use quotation marks here because everything is a text value in XML files. Um, now if I want to save that if I change uh, attributes, and if I add values or change values in the end, I want to save it. So I need to write to the file again. So what I need to do in the end is I need to say DOM tree dot write XML, and then I need to pass a file stream which is going to go to people.xml. Oh my god, what is happening here? In writing mode. And that is actually it. So if I run this, we should be able to see some changes in the XML file. As you can see, ID is 200, name is Peter Warm, and new attribute is hello. Um, yeah, so that is how you change values. You can do that with all attributes, with all node values, and so on. Uh, you can iterate through the people and apply some algorithms to change their attributes. This is how you change values. Now we can not only change values, we can also add new nodes, new people, new groups, new animals if you want to. Uh, but you need to do it in a DOM kind of way. So you need to think about the hierarchy. So first you need to create the name, the age, uh, the weight, the height, then you need to combine this and add this to a person, then you need to add this person to the people group. Um, and how do we do that? We basically start by saying new person equals DOM tree dot create element. And we call this a person element, we say new person dot set attribute uh, ID is going to be I don't know, 89. For example, I'm just picking anything here. Um, and now we create other elements that represent name, age, weight, height, for example, so I say name equals DOM tree dot create element. And I call this name. Notice that I'm not saying new person dot create element, I'm saying DOM tree create element. And later on, I'm going to add it uh, to the person. So what I do is DOM tree create element name, name dot append child, and I want to append just a text. So DOM tree dot create text note, and I want to call this I don't know, uh, I'm going to call it Florian Dedov because that's my name. So we do it like that we say h equals DOM tree create element h, h dot append child DOM tree create text note. And uh, I'm 22 years old at the moment. Then weight equals DOM tree create element weight, weight dot append child 
Dom tree create text node. Uh, at the moment, I'm about 84 kilograms. And then height, Dom tree create element. Height, height, a pen child, Dom tree create text node. And at the moment, I'm 189 centimeters of height. There you go. And all we need to do now is we need to append this to the person. So we say new person, append child, and then name. Oh, sorry. So new person, append child name, new person, append child age, new person, append child weight, and new person, append child height. And then in the end, the final thing that we do is we say group dot append child new person. So you can see the hierarchy here, we create individual elements, we stick them together like Lego, uh, Lego bricks, and then we add them to the group, finally, and then we can write it to the XML file. And once it's done, you can see down here, we have a new person. You can see it's not the most pretty thing that you can do, you can do some workarounds, you can try to use the too pretty XML function it doesn't work very well for me. One life hack that I found is what you can do if you have some blank files, uh, is or actually let's do it with with the pretty XML uh, thing. So we comment that out. And we say with open uh, people dot XML in writing mode as F, what we do is F dot write Dom tree to pretty XML. And you're going to see that this produces a little bit of problems here, we have a lot of spaces. But what we can at least this one is is uh, pretty now. So what we can do here is in PyCharm, at least we can do uh, control shift and J in order to remove all the blanks. So we can just hold it down. We don't delete anything except for blank lines. So now it's all in a line. And now we can just go with control, alt and L to prettify the XML file. So this works if you want to do it manually. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.